Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me today for a flip through of the month of October in my pocket size bullet journal. I'm already in my November setup. It's mid-November basically when I'm filming this, so it's a little bit late. I have a whole video on this setup, but this is a Chic Sparrow Pocket Deluxe in the Earl Grey from the Tea House Collection, and I love this cover. I used it last November too, and the markings are just beautiful to me. October was also the first month that I spent in this Zequens pocket notebook, which I have an entire separate review on. It's held up really well. I did notice when I was moving it that there is a little bit of separation here, but it hasn't gone through the cover and I'm not sure it will, but I will keep an eye on it. I think that happens because this is really slippery. So when it's in back pockets, it tends to move around quite a bit, even in the Sojourner Trifolio, which had a full slip pocket here. So just something I noticed, but not something that is concerning me in the slightest. To the flip itself. I have my vellum here from Mrs. Brimble's Etsy shop. I printed this off from Brandy Kincaid on Instagram. I had a page where I typically put my task list, but I didn't end up using it at all. So I put in a sticker from a Happy Planner sticker book and I kept up with my calendar. I also kept up with my Calendex. I wrote something almost every day and I really like having this space here for appointments. I enjoy the kind of at a glance feel of it and it's something that I plan to continue going forward. My October calendar. So I use this pretty consistently. I can see that I fell off here for the last week and a half. I'm also using this side column. I just separate it and draw my own lines here to plan ahead for my YouTube schedule. And that's been working really well. I like having it in this notebook, so I'm continuing that in November too. This is from the Coffee Monsters Co. These clear stickers are from the Happy Planner sticker book. And this functional box is from Starfish and Frog. Also the Coffee Monsters Co. So this was my first month drawing in this kind of weekly overview. So I have my tasks the days of the week, a space here where I can track some habits if I want. You can see here, I just laid down some Simply Gilded Washi and a space here for daily gratitude. I have loved this spread. You'll see I used it consistently. Any tasks I had, I just wrote in as I thought of them and I could go ahead. I set these up first, so all of the weeks are together. And if I thought of something that needed to be done on a specific week, I would just go and write it right there so it was waiting for me. I did my Instagram schedule and my appointments or birthdays just for an overview and that was really helpful. Here I can see I tried to track some neck and shoulders yoga. I did it one day, better than none. Some Paper Geek Co. Washi. I figured I could put more habits here if I wanted to and just repeat this kind of layout, but I didn't end up doing that at all. Paper Geek Co. again. This washi is from Note & Wish. I didn't do any habit tracking here. Here I'm starting to keep track of some water intake. I messed up my numbers, I realized, I think midway through the month here. I messed it up here. I think I went from 21 to 23. So I just added 31 and the gratitude for it right below. These are from Let's Plan It. Now we've gone to a spread I had for video ideas and videos, just the process that I go through. And we move right into my dailies. So for this month, I did my dailies, well, daily. I didn't set them up ahead of time, which I've done in the past, and I do it every night or occasionally every morning. And it's been working really, really well. 
I still have this line and this was inspired by Andrea at Anne's Plans and I still love it as much as ever. I just love the way it looks. So I do my tasks and sort of any memories at the bottom here. I'm not journaling in this. I'm really not journaling that much at all to be honest with you right now but I do still have my Hobonichi A6 where I journal if I feel like it. I'm also not doing my doodles and hand lettering in here anymore. Coffee Monsters Co. Have some post-its. We needed to stop at Ikea one day. This was my brother and I built a some Alex drawers from Ikea. So I had this starfish and frog sticker from a sampler of two kids building with Legos. So I thought that was appropriate. Uh, my brother cut off four inches of my hair. That's from Once More With Love. Some video notes. I ended up doing two separate videos on here just because I had the extra space. Quiet Day, Coffee Monsters Co. I was reading. I had an appointment. Some happy mail that I sent, actually. And this was October's Stationary Stockpile Challenge. This is a collab that I do with Dakshina. I'll list the playlist, but every month we have a different theme. And this month's theme was characters. So I love how this turned out. This is from White Deer Stationery. I love that soft kind of vintage feel. Laundry from Alley Cat's Design. Happy Dea. Kind of a la day. That's from Bidu and Co. Just some clothing that I would like to try. That's from Pumpkin Paper Co. Thanksgiving. I marked that with one of the seasonal stickers from the Coffee Monsters Co. Some more kind of food and eating themed stickers here. There's a lot of laundry. This is some more vellum from Mrs. Brimble's. And I ordered some washi tape from Note and Wish. And I love their washi tape. I know I've showed it before, but you can really see the foiling on these two. And these are beautiful for, I want to say fall because it has the leaves, but I think the colors would lend themselves to any time of year. So really happy with all of these. This was some clothing and other items I was selling. Post-it, stickers. I'm keeping my appointments here on a little functional box. Here, I've just clipped this together, but I've made a spread for Christmas gift ideas and I used a post-it tab and covered it with this beautiful foiled snowflake washi that I got from Robin at Talks from the Heart. So I've just tabbed that so I can flip back and forth to it as I think of ideas or purchase any items. Just mostly pen and a few stickers and washi tape. That has really worked out well for me. I also love doing the dates like this. It's simple, it's fun, it lets me practice my hand lettering and I'm just really happy with the end result. Here we had a Halloween day. So my brother, his girlfriend, and Paul and I, we watched Hubie Halloween on Netflix and I got to use up some of these fun stickers. These are all from a Let's Planet kit. We had charcuterie and scones and pumpkin butter. It was one of those really luxurious, comforting days that we all had off and were able to spend together, which I love. Some post-it notes. I did some shopping here, Pumpkin Paper Co. Oh, I finished the show Ted Lasso. There were only 10 episodes and I absolutely loved that show. I had a friend who heard about it from Brené Brown's podcast and recommended it to me. And I'm super thankful because I think it might go up there with one of my all-time favorite shows. It's on Apple Plus or Apple TV. I'm not sure. I downloaded the free trial so that I could watch it and it was totally worth it for me. So I just wrote here and used some stickers to mark that I finished the 
season. This is from Paper Geek Co. as well. I was doing a little packing. We visited Paul's family up north. It was a safe and COVID conscious visit. So it was nice to get away a little bit. We just drove up. Here's some pictures that I had posted on Instagram of Paul and I walking on a trail and my planner in some leaves and uh, Paul had a fire, well, a couple of fires that weekend. I also posted that I burned my morning pages notebooks and I loved it. I've never actually burned a notebook before and it was really, really satisfying. For me, when I do my morning pages, if there's something that comes out that I think is important or I want to remember, I'll just jot it on a post-it note and leave it on the front cover. And I will keep those. But other than that, I have never gone back through and read my morning pages yet because for me, it's just a brain dump, a stream of consciousness. And I know it's not anything that I want to revisit personally. So it's nice because when I write it, it feels like letting it go. And then watching it burn just felt like closure, I guess. It just felt like okay, I've let that go. I've let it out on paper. Now I've let it out into the universe and I can move on from it. So anyways, that was unexpected, but a lot of fun. I'm really, really glad I remembered to bring them and that we had a fire so that I could toss them on. This is a week where I just didn't feel like getting into this as much, I guess. So that's the beauty of the bullet journal. Instead of having a whole page for these days, I just separated them and worked from there. We left to come home first thing in the morning before it was light out and we saw a beautiful fox. So I had this sticker from Paper Bits Co. and it was perfect. This is a new to me sticker shop I found. It's based out of Toronto and I love her style so much. So I placed a pretty big order and I'm really, really happy with everything. Here, like not too much. Here we had three appointments and then just a few notes. Paper Geek Co. as well. Some stickers from that same Happy Planner sticker book. I'm placing a custom order from Yard and the Leathersmith for my Hobonichi cousin for 2021. So I'm really excited about that. Halloween, which... Nobody trick-or-treated or gave out candy in our neighborhood because of the pandemic. So it was a quiet Halloween in with the family. We had our own little box of candy to share. And that was the end of the month. I just have a couple of notes here for my custom cover. And I really enjoyed the process of trying to plan it out and see what I wanted and what would work. So I will definitely share that once it arrives. My last pages are my October review inspired by Zoe at Stationary Squirrel. So I go through and I write the categories and I fill them in. So Paul and I are reading The Midnight Library by Matt Haig together and it's really nice to have a book that we're both enjoying and can talk about. Watching Ted Lasso listening to Oh I Found a Guilty Pleasures playlist on Spotify that does have a lot of songs that I enjoy and just eating, drinking, creating. My friend has a small shop and she has some ornaments that need handwriting on them. Not cursive writing but somebody to print on them by hand and she asked if I would be interested in doing that so I definitely was so I've been working on those slowly. Planning my 2021 lineup, needing less screen time, wanting to simplify my planner situation. I don't think that's how I'll start 2021, but we'll see. Loving Ted Lasso, not loving eye strain. Because I've been working on the ornaments, I just need to be aware of taking time to rest my eyes from both the ornaments and my phone. Wishing, trying, grateful inspired. That's another Ted Lasso. You'll see Ted Lasso all over this. Making time, quoting, guess who, Ted Lasso. And I just put a quote there. 
One of the things that I mentioned that I did in October is I did pull out washi tape from my stash and just have it set aside. That's something that I first started doing during One Book July when I wanted a more curated collection. And honestly, this works the best for me. I kept the things I had pulled in this Milu rec case, which is beautiful. So I had my Tombow 991. I had a couple of other pens. So if I wanted any browns or yellows, I could use these, the Anergel Klenna, Sarasa, Zebra Sarasa Clip, and the Zebra Vintage. And then just these washi tapes. So like I said, for me, having them already pulled out and easily accessible means that I am way more likely to use them. So I've done the same for November and I think I'll continue on. We'll see how I feel. If it works, it works. And if it doesn't, I'll change it up. But I think it just makes a difference that it's literally at hand. I don't have to go through any drawers. I don't really have to make much of a decision. I just look through the curated ones and choose whatever I'm feeling for that page. I really enjoyed this notebook. The smaller grid and white paper is such a huge bonus for me, even though there might have been some bleed through and definitely shadowing throughout. It never bothered me at all, to be honest with you. So I mostly used my Uniball Signo 0.38 and the Jetstream 0.5. I'm a creature of habit, so that probably doesn't surprise any of you. I do feel like this is pretty much my groove, mostly pen and paper with stickers and washi and a chance to practice some hand lettering and make my own spreads that are fairly minimal. I like having my notes kind of spread throughout the daily pages. I just like being able to flip through and have a sense of what I was doing at the time. Like here, I know I was researching some ethical clothing brands and, you know, I placed an order from Note and Wish. I was able to sell some items. I first started thinking about Christmas gifts. So I'm looking forward to using this notebook for the rest of 2020. I hope that you're all doing well and staying safe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.